Hi and welcome to our epic comparison about GitLab and GitHub. In this video we will compare GitLab and GitHub in regards on how to implement a DevSecOps pipeline. The comparison is based on two video series we've done. We did one about GitHub and one about GitLab. Each series consists of 12 episodes. So what we did for each of these series was building up a DevSecOps pipeline. We started with introducing the platform, introducing software composition analysis, which is dependency checking, license compliance, static application security testing, container scanning, secret detections, dynamic application security testing, also known as automatic penetration testing. We introduced how vulnerability management is done on the platform, how to perform merge requests, respectively pull requests, how to schedule pipelines, and we gave our recommendations for each platform. During this journey, we ourselves learned quite a lot about these platforms, so we think it's an interesting approach to compare the platforms and give you our impressions on that. As Paddy said, we have implemented an enterprise-ready DevSecOps pipeline with GitLab and with GitHub. During these 24 videos, we have of course concentrated us on the DevOps part, but especially on the security part. During these videos, we always strived for a balanced solution, which provided us a good enough security in both of these platforms. But you could also see in the videos, these varied quite a lot from case to case and from platform to platform. What is important to say is that in your case, this balanced security can be, of course, completely different. To do these demos with GitLab and with GitHub, we needed to use the enterprise in GitHub or the ultimate license in GitLab. Both are paid licenses, but they enabled us to do the advanced security which we wanted to do. Many of the features which we have shown, which enable you to do DevSecOps, are only available in the paid licenses of both platforms. Please be aware that these platforms we're talking about are changing quite rapidly. So while you're looking this video, things might have changed already a bit. In addition, we provide you with information of how what we experienced. So this is our opinion and our experience. It's completely okay to disagree. Now we are going to compare these two platforms side by side. First, we start with the hard facts. GitLab has more than 30 million users. GitHub, more than 100 million. Both platforms can be used in the cloud as software as a service or self-managed or on-prem. GitLab is more expensive. The free version is of course free, but the premium version costs $24 per user per month and the ultimate version costs $99 per user per month. GitHub again is free in the basic version, but requires you to pay 3.60 per user per month for the team version or 19.25 per user per month for the enterprise license which is the one we used. 
And this makes GitHub more affordable. GitLab is open source and it's under the MIT license. GitHub on the other side is closed source. The availability target of GitLab is 99.5% uptime guaranteed. GitHub on the other side offers 99.99% uptime. The free license of GitLab offers you 5 GB of storage, 400 minutes per month of CI CD runtime, and 5 users per repository. The GitHub personal use free license includes unlimited storage, more than 2000 CI CD minutes per month, which means pipeline minutes basically, or workflow minutes, plus an unlimited number of contributors to your repositories. When it comes to the ultimate license of GitLab, then GitLab offers you 250 gigabyte of storage, 50,000 CI CD minutes per month. And it offers you a huge feature list um, when it comes to building up a DevSecOps pipeline containing protected branches, code owners, merge requests with approval rules, security dashboards, vulnerability management, dependency scanning, container scanning, static application security testing and dynamic application security testing. The GitHub Enterprise license on the other side offers unlimited storage and also 50,000 CI CD minutes per month. DevSecOps relevant features include protected branches, code owners, pull requests with approval rules, as well as what they call GitHub Advanced Security. Be aware that they offer a lot of additional capabilities, but our focus is on security. We found it a little bit easier to learn GitLab than GitHub. You can see here both tools which we used, GitLab and GitHub, in comparison. As you can see, the GitLab user interface is a little bit more clean. It's a little bit clearer where all the things are versus the GitHub one. In this comparison, you will also hear about other points we think make the learning experience easier with GitLab than with GitHub. GitLab provides you a very good comprehensive documentation. While GitHub has very limited documentation regarding security and kind of needs you to look a lot into what they call market space, that offers tools that are provided by the community or by vendors. Just to give you a little impression of what we mean by that, on the left hand you see the GitLab documentation when it comes to security in a DevOps pipeline. So there we have in-depth documentation when it comes to security in GitLab. GitHub on the other side provides a very slim documentation about their security features and you need to look up most of the stuff within Marketplace or on extra resources on the web. GitHub and also GitLab, they both have a comparable web IDE for developing your application. As you can see, both platforms provide their editor based on Visual Studio code. When it comes to the pipeline, then GitLab is a little bit harder to understand and also to keep an overview about your pipeline. While GitHub provides, in our opinion, a better description language to build your pipeline and offers better maintainability for the pipeline. When we compare how we are building up the pipelines in GitLab and in GitHub, then you can see that within GitLab, 
you only have one file, the GitLab CI YAML file, which you are going to use versus in GitHub, you can have multiple of these YAML files and you can build up multiple workflows um, out of these YAML files. If we jump into one of these pipeline files, like our main pipeline, for example, we can see that we can create for each job a sub workflow and that's very easy to read. Also, we have good triggers that are very well visible. While on the GitLab side, you can also include files, for example, steps, but you visibility is not that good to what actual job they now apply or to what step they apply. So it's harder to, to keep the overview of your whole pipeline ecosystem. On the other hand, looking at pipelines that we're running, it's e a bit easier in our opinion on the GitLab side. Because there you just go to pipelines and you'll find all your pipeline runs. With the drawback that it's just a list of pipelines that were run and you don't exactly see what, what part of the pipeline that actually was running. On the other side, when you go to GitHub, then in GitHub it's called Actions, um, which is not so nice and this has a little bit of a history behind it. You see that the GitHub Actions are more like automation steps that you can bring in and they are not so designed for CI, CD pipelines. Of course, nowadays you can use these for your CI, CD pipelines. You see that you also have a nice overview about the runs that you have and, and about all of the workflows which you have executed. When it comes to the out-of-the-box security tooling, you could see before that GitLab provides you many security tools out of the box. You could see that with the pipelines, with the templates that were included. So you get out-of-the-box SAST, SCA tooling support or DUST tooling support. It's also very well documented. GitHub on the other side provides a very limited set of security tools out of the box and most of the security tools you will have to search for on their marketplace. This marketplace has two main problems. One we will address under supply chain risk and the other one is that finding stuff in there is not so straightforward. As well as documentation is often very limited on these tools. When it comes to vulnerability management, which is essential because when you are building a DevSecOps pipeline, you will generate quite a lot of vulnerabilities and you need to manage these vulnerabilities. Then in the case of GitLab, it is limited, but you can survive with that. GitHub on the other side provides also a initial user interface for vulnerability management, but it's very limited regarding its capabilities. So even if you're ready to accept a lot of trade-offs, it just won't be good enough, as we will see. Just looking at the overview, we see that there's a bit of difference there. On the GitLab side, we have a view that presents you a dashboard where you see your vulnerability flow over time. In addition, we see that there are quite a lot of user interface ports that contribute to the security overview and the vulnerability management. If you go to the security tab on GitHub on the other side, the value that you see on first sight is very limited. Then navigating to the actual vulnerabilities is kind of hard. We see here on the vulnerability alerts 
There is something about Dependabot, which is not really directly vulnerability related. Then we have a code scanning port and a secret scanning port. No idea why this is not merged together, for example. So let's jump into the vulnerability part of code scanning. And I'll do the same on the GitLab side. On first side, this is quite comparable. We have on both sides uh, the chance to see the vulnerabilities, their criticality, and we can kind of filter by tool, branch, rule, severity, and so on. Here already we see that GitLab has put more emphasis on the vulnerability management port. We get directly in the list when the issue was first detected as well as its basic status, meaning is it a new one that needs to be triaged, is it uh, confirmed, or what is it in what state, this vulnerability. On the GitHub side, for example, we need to filter for these. On GitLab, on the other side, we see all the tools that are security relevant present in one aggregated vulnerability management. In addition, very crucial is the capability to submit new vulnerabilities. So if I had a pen test that was conducted manually for me, then I will be able to add these findings to this list in GitLab and use GitLab as the single source for my vulnerability management of the project. When you have a DevSecOps pipeline, secret management, is quite crucial. You will always have some secrets like for example passwords which you need to store somewhere in a secret way. When it comes to GitLab there is no built-in solution to securely store secrets. GitLab recommends you to use an external vault. They recommend to use HashiCorp vault to um, store your secrets in a secret way. GitHub on the other side provides a secret store within the platform itself. And on top of that, they even provide a very well integration with Azure Key Vault, which is really great for managing secrets on an enterprise level. So on GitLab, we have the option to provide some variables and even mask them. But everything you define there is not really protected. On the other hand, in GitHub, we have a whole section that allows us to add our secrets. See just behind us. When it comes to supply chain risk, then GitLab, as you could see before, provides you with some tools and also with code which is already there and which is curated by GitLab. This is a big advantage compared to GitHub where you most of the time have to go to the community provided market space tools and use them. What this means for you is that you actually import code from whatever source it ever is and trust that. For an enterprise, that's not acceptable and you need to create processes that make sure that the code you use from marketplaces is secure. So this will require a lot of review work and a lot of effort on your side. The previous point leads to another point, the custom tool integration. GitLab provides you a lot of tooling out of the box but when you want to integrate other tools, then it gets really complicated. You always need to use some GitLab specifica, like GitLab specific files for the import and everything does not feel very good. GitHub on the other side builds more on standards and well-known interfaces and file formats. 
In addition, you'll find a lot of examples in the marketplace that already do this kind of integration. So it's way easier to also integrate your custom tool into the pipeline. When you do changes on a different branch, you are going to do a so-called merge request in GitLab. Merge requests in GitLab are very good. We will see that in a minute, how they are split up and what kind of information you get out of that. In GitHub, we call these pull requests and to some degree, they are comparable from the data that you see, but not completely. When we look at GitLab, then we can see on top what kind of merge request it is, who has done the merge request. We see here uh, the commits that are going in, the pipeline runs, and we can also click on the pipeline runs. And of course, we also see the changes. When we look at the overview, then we of course can also see the approvals which are in here. We see by whom it was merged and we have a nice view on the pipeline and on the activity. Looking at another already merged, meaning closed pull request, we see similar data. We have the activity log, the commits that led to this pull request, and we see in addition the checks that were executed during that pull request. This is a quite a nice feature that we are actually missing on the GitLab side. So we see here the security tools that were executed and what their alerts and findings were. On GitLab, we have lost this information for historical merge requests. More on, we also see obviously what files were changed during that pull request. So while we have a very slight advantage on the GitHub side for closed or already merged pull requests versus merge requests, the situation looks different for open pull requests or merge requests. We have now opened such an open merge or pull request for you on the screen. We can see on the GitLab side uh, that the merge request has been run. We see here the test. We cannot even click on that. We see the, that two total tests have been executed. We see the license compliance. We can click on the full report. And the real cool feature is the security scanning where we see that one new um, vulnerability has been found and also some vulnerabilities have been fixed with this merge request. This comparison that you can see what kind of new vulnerabilities have been introduced and what kind of vulnerabilities have been fixed is a huge advantage of GitLab. On GitHub, on the other side, we have quite a clutched view. So on the first side, it, I see that, yeah, there were some tests run, but the, the user interface here is quite unprofessional, so to say. One sees immediately that we had to kind of bring this in on our own, that it was not out of the box here. The same holds for the license compliance check, where we just see, okay, obviously there failed seven, but are this new or not, we don't know here. Then when it comes to the pipeline steps, we see that most of them went through one failed the license compliance check. So obviously there was some new licenses there. I can now click on details, which will navigate me to a completely different location here. And I'll have to figure out what the, the, the problem is with these seven findings. Going back, if I see also that, well, I know we resolved a lot of uh, dependency issues, so vulnerabilities within our dependencies, but I don't see that here anywhere. 
which is a bit of shame because I improved the overall situation. So overall, we see in our opinion that when it comes to merge or pull requests, GitLab is in the advantage here. This concludes now the GitLab and GitHub comparison of the features. With that, we move now to the next section where we are going to state our improvement items and our wishes for GitLab first and afterwards for GitHub. Our wishes for improvement for GitLab are the following. First of all, as mentioned, we would like to see a proper and easy to use secret management, which is included in GitLab. Then we are looking for a couple of improvements in the area of vulnerability management. First and foremost, we want to add a feature that allows us to add descriptions why we dismissed something. I also want to see functionality where I can say I want to dismiss an item until a certain date or for 30, 60 or 90 days, for example. This feature is important because with that I can clean up the vulnerabilities and get a cleaner view and easier to manage situation without forgetting to resolve something later that wasn't possible to be resolved right now. Then I want to be able to change the severity of a finding and give a comment why I changed this severity. This is for example important when I have services that run in a well-protected area of my network and therefore a vulnerability there is not as critical as if that service would run close to the internet. And while we have in GitLab kind of an overview that holistically shows me all my projects and all their vulnerabilities in there, I want to extend these capabilities a lot. Next, it should be easier to either alarm if I find new vulnerabilities or even break a pipeline and stop when a new vulnerability is found. And this naturally should be configurable based on the severity, for example. Last but not least, it would be nice to have extended reporting functionality built in. In the end, I would like to get a vulnerability management tool within GitLab that allows me to easily dismiss each request for a dedicated tool and focus on GitLab alone. As you could see in our videos, the flexibility regarding branches that are used for the vulnerability management is limited to the default branch. This is too restricted and we would like to see that you can do vulnerability management on different branches. Next, we would love if the dust tool that's provided has a better default configuration so that it finds more. What we also saw with GitLab is that we always needed to, to build and do stuff all over again. So the caching didn't really work for us. We of course had also a look at that problem and we also found some solutions, but they were all a little bit too complicated. What we would like to see as a wish is a built-in caching that really works so that we don't need to do everything over and over again in each build step. This is very important for a DevSecOps approach because you want to have fast feedback and therefore the pipeline needs to be fast and for that we need the artifacts of previous build steps reused in further build steps. And while we really appreciate the default tools that come with GitLab, we would also very much like if it's getting easier to include our own custom tools into 
the GitLab pipeline. So with that, we leave GitLab behind and we are going to the wishes for GitHub. The most important improvement item which is on our wish list is that we get a default GitHub created security tooling. At the moment, as you could see from our videos, the security tooling is mostly created by the open source community. This is, of course, not a bad thing, but um, you always need for an enterprise grade to copy the source code to you and have extended reviews on these security toolings so that you can use that in an enterprise environment. And this leads to our wish that we really want that GitHub has a set of security tools like GitLab has that, which you can use and where you have the trust in GitHub that these are really good security tools. Thinking a step further on that line, we would love to see a marketplace of trusted tools there, where Microsoft, GitHub kind of provides their check that they assured that the code you get with that is not harming your builds. And with that, we are coming to the vulnerability management. As you could see in our videos, we are not really satisfied with the current vulnerability management that we have in GitHub. On our wish list is we want to be able to add and manage external security issues or vulnerabilities. For example, this means that when we find a vulnerability in a pen test, then we would like to be able to add it in the GitHub vulnerability management. Next, we would like to be able to dismiss until a certain time frame a vulnerability in the vulnerability management. At the moment, we are not able to change the severity of a vulnerability. Um, and this is something we would like to do. We want to be able to change the severity, of course, with a comment in the vulnerability management. And last but not least, we would like to have a company aggregated view over multiple projects so that we have sort of a dashboard where we see the vulnerability improvements or if it gets better over time and have that in a nice management dashboard where we really can see and then also take actions. Then, of course, also in the area of vulnerability management, we would like to have the ability to alarm or even break a pipeline when new vulnerability um, or configured severities are appearing. And as like with GitLab, we would really love to see some extended reporting functionality when it comes to vulnerability management. Then we want that scheduling is able to start pipelines on all branches directly without workarounds. Then we would like to see security tools available in all areas of security. For example, as you could see in our videos, there was no GitHub action which does license compliance as of today in the marketplace. Thanks to Juan Manuel from Microsoft, we were able to implement such a tool. And of course, now there is a GitHub action in the market store, but we would really love to see more of these tools and really have also a comprehensive set of these tools which are curated by Microsoft. What we also would love to see is the ability to define for pull requests conditions when approval will be required. A typical condition could, for example, be that a security tool finds a new vulnerability of a given criticality or a pull request that includes 
new dependencies with new vulnerabilities. There are of course also solutions in GitHub for the caching and using artifacts from pipeline steps. But as we also found out, they are not really reliable and we also had quite some struggles with them to get them really to work. And even in some cases, um, we could not even get it to work and so it didn't really work. So it would be really nice to be able to reuse artifacts in a very easy and convenient way in the different pipeline steps. To summarize the main learnings through our journey with GitLab and GitHub, we have the following insights. Enterprise-ready DevSecOps pipelines are possible and feasible on both platforms as of today. Our recommendation to you is to focus on the security tools that provide the most value for your effort. First, this would be SCA, which is the Software Composition Analysis. Second, it is the Container Scanning. Third is SUST, Static Application Security Testing. Fourth, it is Secret Detection. And the fifth one is License Compliance. With these five tools, you have the most value for your effort in creating your DevSecOps pipeline. These are the most important ones. Of course, all the others are also important, but if you have limited time and budget, or if you don't have security experts at hand, then at least these five are very good to get implemented. Then remember to regularly do software composition analysis and container scanning for code that is today in production. So the current production release must be tested regularly. When it comes again to the vulnerability management, then try to use tool that can be integrated into the vulnerability management. This saves you the cost of having an extra security management tool. The goal is really to have that one platform for the developers, which they can see their vulnerabilities in one view and manage these vulnerabilities over that one view. At the moment, this is only achievable with GitLab. Being able to identify vulnerabilities, it's also important to resolve them. And for this, you need to establish processes how you are handling these findings. These processes are required for both existing vulnerabilities that are already there, but also, and maybe even more important, what you'll do when new findings pop up. We also recommend to protect your release or your production branch. This requires that you are able to review and approve changes on these branches when you, for example, do a merge request or a pull request. And last but not least, consider to copy resources you include or use from somewhere else than your own to your own repositories. This includes marketplace tools so that you can also review them, but it might also be valuable if you just include provided pipeline jobs, for example, templates as provided by GitLab today. Now to the summary of the summary. When we need to summarize our findings of each one of the platforms, then it would be the following. With GitLab, you have a good tool at hand. It allows you to deliver fast results thanks to the out-of-the-box tooling. Unfortunately, it lacks 
a proper secrets management. All in all, GitLab is our recommended tool when you want to build up fast a DevSecOps pipeline. GitHub, on the other side, offers more flexibility and supports great secret management. It has a living community, but also comes with high supply chain risk that has to be mitigated. It has no reasonable security tool defaults and it is missing a critical vulnerability management feature. Overall, we would recommend GitHub when you have complex applications or pipelines or when you have to integrate with a few external security tools. So this now finally concludes the video series which we have done on GitLab and on GitHub. Thank you very much for watching our video and see you soon. See you. Bye bye.